and this clip will prove the linearity of expectation. So let's recall that linearity of expectation is this theorem, okay? You've given two random variables, x and y, and uh, we know uh, this theorem states that uh, the expectation of x plus y equals the expectation of x plus the expectation of y. Okay, and this is true for any x and y. So we prove this uh, from the definition of the uh, 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 expectation. So in the first step, we show that uh, expected value of x plus y equals this. And basically, you can look at this. This is the form. Okay, so it's the sum of two random variables. And you enumerate over our possible value of x. So this is i, right? And this is the i. And our possible value of y in j, right? And you add them up and you weight that by the probability that you're going to get this value. Okay, so we're going to prove this first. Okay, from the definition of the expectation, we know that uh, expected value of x plus y equals the weighted sum of all possible value of this term, right? So this is from the definition, right? From the definition. So let's look at this uh, probability term first. Okay, so we would like to somehow split x and y, right? So um, so what's the probability of x plus y e equal k? So there are many cases, and uh, if you look at the each value of x, so we can sum up for any value i of x from minus infinity to infinity, and for the probability that x equals i, and 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 these are the each. Uh, cases right so we look at the value of x equals i and and this th this is the probability that x plus y equal k right so it's it's if we iterate over our possible value of x um, x plus y is going to be equals to k when y equals k minus i okay and not that we can sum this up because each of this event are mutually exclusive because uh, the value of x are different so they are all mutually exclusive so we can sum them up and for all of this you get this to be the probability that x plus y equals k okay so we can plug this into that sum so this is the same k equals minus infinity to infinities k times this okay all right so let's do some uh, manipulation on the sum okay so first of all I can push the k inside right because uh, this this remain fixed so k times the sum equals you can the sum of k times this so you can get that this is expect uh, the sum over our possible value of k, the sum over our possible value of i equals minus infinity to infinity times k times the probability that x equals i, y equals k minus i. All right, and uh, because the sum uh, k and i are independent, right? So I can swap the the order this order so that I get uh, I can say that this is I and this is K all right so it's the same thing because uh, you sum over I and sum over K of the same thing it's the same sum all right and finally I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna use this new variable so I would let uh, J equals k minus i okay if I set j equals k minus i here then I can rewrite the sum like this so i remain the same okay and then I would 
I would uh, change this variable from k to j. Okay, from something to something. We would figure this out later, and then I would replace. Okay. Uh, k minus i. Okay, I would replace uh, k. Uh, this is k, right? So k equals uh, j plus i, right? So this implies this. So I, I would uh, iterate over j, replace k with, uh, instead of uh, iterate over k, I iterate over j, right? And replace k with uh, j plus i. So I'm going to get... Uh, j plus i, so it's equal to i plus j, right? And the probability that x equals i, and then j equals k minus i, right? So, but k is j plus i, so this equals, so j plus i minus i, so it's y equals j. So we are left to figure out the indices for j, Okay, but because k range from minus infinity to infinity, right, for each value of i, right, um, if you look at that, uh, for each value of i, uh, the value of j that such that the value of k range from minus infinity to infinity is the same range. So basically, you can uh, really like it, it, write this like this. And you can... Uh, Try to work it out that uh, this these two things are equal, right? And this is the term that we would like to uh, to prove. Okay, so this is what we want to say. So it's equal to this. Okay, so this is the first part of the proof. So the tricky one is is the the tricky part is to change the variable k to j like this. Okay, now when we have this. Okay, so from the previous step, we can write something like this. And then we can split i and j. Okay, so this is a sum times this probability. So you can multiply the probability inside and split the sum into something like this. And now we're going to work on this and that separately. Okay, so let's look at the first term. So the first term, uh, i, like that, i, j. So what we can do is to uh, pull i. So i is independent of j, so we can take it out. So we're going to have this i equals minus infinity to infinity i times the sum of the probability over our possible value of j minus infinity to infinity to xi, x equals i, y equals j. But what exactly this? So this is the sum of the, the probability x equals i for any value of j, right? But these are uh, mutually exclusive events. So it's like, you, so this sum is the union of all possible uh, events that x equals i, right? So this in turn, this is, uh, this term is probability of x equals i, right? Because you sum all over all possible value of j exhaustively. So this term becomes this. And this is the expectation of, from the definition, this is the expectation of x. Okay, the second term is a little bit, uh, you can do the same, right? Uh, because i and j are independent, okay? And the range are, you know, independent of each other. So you can switch the range. Okay, so you first switch the range. Probability of x equals i, y equals j. And then take the j out. Okay, so j times sum over i. The probability that 
x equals i, y equals j. And again, this is uh, the probability that y equals j, right? So you sum them up, you get j equals minus infinities, j times probability that y equals j. And again, from the definition, this is expectation of y. Right. So you plug them in, we get this. Okay, the first term is expectation of x, the second term is expectation of y, as required. So that's it. Um, that's the proof of the uh, linearity of expectation. So I hope you see how we can manipulate the sum and, and see how this uh, uh, main uh, tools works out. All right. See you next. Thank you.